The L890 does have a digital interface, which is a little bit unusual on a searcher. It's mostly they're a very mechanical machine where you still have to make We still have to make a whole bunch of physical adjustments to make things happen on here. But the last thing I did was a four thread surge. So I've got a lovely four thread surge right there. Uh, this is gonna help me in a moment. We're gonna talk cover stitching today because I did a little bit of surging last week on the L850, which is a serger only. So, and I just thought it was really neat how seamlessly this machine will let you know what you need to change to go from one thing to another. So. We're gonna just move slowly through a couple things. So on screen, um, we've got the tensions for the four threads being used. So yellow is our left needle, green is our right needle, blue is our upper looper, red is our lower looper. Right now our needles are stopping in the up position. Our stitch length is set at 2.5, which is quite normal for a serger stitch. And our differential is at one, which is just fine for lots of things. We can show the stitch in single color or in full color. So this will be the front of our stitch down where the blue is on top. And where it's folded over on that image, that will be the back of your fabric. So what the stitch looks like from the back. You're able to change the speed on this machine. So the top speed is 1,350 stitches a minute. When you're just getting comfortable with this machine, you might feel that that is way too fast. So you're able to slow that down. Um, I don't mind being a bit of a speed demon, so I'm going to leave my speed alone. So from here, after we've done a four thread surge, um, maybe I'll just do another one real quick for you guys. So that tail coming out the back, you'll want that started every time you start to surge. And then we've got some really lovely markings on our, on our presser foot here. So we're going to zoom right in show you what you're looking at on your presser foot. So the markings on your presser foot, the first indent marking is where the blade will be when you're set at six millimeters. Then we have our right needle line for our serger, left needle line for our serger, right needle line for the cover stitch, center needle line for the cover stitch, and left needle line for the cover stitch. So there's five different needle positions on here. Um, most likely if you're just surging, you'll be using the back two further back in the machine. If you're doing a combination stitch, you'll probably have one needle in the front and one needle in the back. If you're doing a true cover stitch, you'll have all your needles in the front part of the needle block. So that's roughly what you're looking at for where your needles are. But to do a four thread surge, really pretty easy. I'm gonna throw my cutoff spin back on. I've already got that tail started. If I want to, this, I don't have a straight piece of fabric right now. I have a whole bunch of weird off cuts in the middle of making a t-shirt. So I thought that would be a fun way to test drive this machine. <laughs> So left needle line, I do want a little bit of fabric trimmed off. And a lovely four thread surge on my knit. I've been hoarding knits at home for quite some time and I need to stop hoarding them and start sewing with them so that I can wear them. <laughs> be much much better for my wardrobe that way so from here I'm pretty happy I've done a four thread surge so from there um, this we're gonna we're gonna pretend we're making a cuff and that we have to hem our cuff that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna switch to cover stitch mode and I'll show you how easy it is to switch between modes on this machine so if I want to change stitches on here I'm gonna use the stitch selection menu and if you made a bunch of changes that you know you want to save for another project on another day, you can save those to your favorites folder. I don't want to save this. It was just a basic four thread surge. I'm going to hit the X button. And it's going to let us go and pick which type of stitch we want. 
And on the machine, there's a guided mode and an expert mode, but the guided mode is going to tell you exactly what needs to change to go from where you are to where you want to be, which is so, so ridiculously easy. Um, lots of people with dual purpose machines uh, struggle because it's on some of them, it's a bit of a nightmare switching between the two and you never know if you got it right because it's tricky. So I, oh no, I don't want to be in that folder. We'll go back a folder. We want to go into cover stitch. So cover stitches, uh, if you're looking at the clothing that you're wearing today, uh, there's probably cover stitch in your underwear. There's probably cover stitch if you're wearing yoga pants. Uh, your t-shirt hem probably has a cover stitch on it. And normally it looks like two or three straight lines on the front and a crazy mishmash of thread on the back. Or two lines on the front and one line on the back. There's a couple different variations of that. You can do it uh, two thread wide, two thread narrow. There's one other stitch this machine will do is called a chain stitch, which is one needle thread and one looper thread. So I'm going to go over and we'll switch into that stitch 21. So it knows where I was before, and it's going to tell me exactly what I need to do to move into the next stitch. Right. So we're going to lift our presser foot. That was step one. Scroll to the next step. Unthread the following thread paths. Because I'm switching all the way over, I'm actually going to unthread everything. So I'm going to cut at the spool. So all of those are unthreaded right at the spool. And usually the easiest way to get all these threads out of the machine is to pull the needle threads through. That will release them from the tension. And then you can pull the whole chain stitch very gently out of the machine. So all my thread is out of the machine. I'm going to start completely from scratch on this. Okay, so that was easy. And there's little videos here too. So it shows you what to do for each of these steps. Uh, we're going to change our presser foot. So right now the default foot that comes on the machine is called the C11. We're going to change that out and switch to the C13. Little red button on the back of the foot. Drop the foot. We're going to switch to the C13, which is just cover stitch. We can drop our foot down and press the button once more to secure it. We're also going to check that our presser foot pressure is adjusted. Mine is at four already. So pressure foot pressure is located on the top of the machine. Really, really good little video right on board the machine. So you don't have to wonder how this is done. So that's under control. We're, next, we're going to move our needles. So my needle screwdriver is hiding in the door. And there's a really lovely needle change tool that comes with your machine. So if you struggle getting your fingers in under here to hold needles, the needle change tool can slide up over the needle. Help hold on to it for you as you loosen it. So because I'm going all the way over to the other needle, I'm going to move these needles. There is two types of needle that ship with the machine. One is a ballpoint, one is not. Otherwise, they are both the same needle type. Needle change tool will help you hold that needle all the way up so you can see it in the little window. And then tighten that screw. And I would just go through and tighten all these needle screws. Um, they're very, very tiny and will disappear onto your floor never to be seen again if you pull them all the way out. And then going back up to our on-screen instructions, we can deactivate the knife. There's a switch on the side of the machine. And move it to the disengaged position. which will drop the knife below the stitch plate. We're going to adjust the cutting width down to five. This makes brings the whole system in as tight as it can, which will allow our change when we change our uh, cover here in a moment to fit. 
uh, we're going to attach the needle, the cover stitch insert. So this is on the on the inside door. There's two doors on this machine to get in. So the surging insert um, guides the thread into the cutoff spin and the fabric into the cutoff spin. And the other insert has markings so that you can hem an even distance up on whatever you're hemming with your cover stitch. We'll also need to deactivate the upper looper using the small dial in behind the second door. So turning it to the O position, we'll disengage it after hand wheel revolution, it'll park it down in the bottom position. So now that upper looper is out of our way, it's not going to get caught as we stitch. Next on screen. Oh, we don't need to change anything else on the uh, upper looper converter because it's parked out of the way. Our stitch selection lever needs to be in the O position. That'll fit in seamlessly with the um, cover stitch insert. And then it tells us what items we need threaded. So we need our three needles threaded as well as our cover stitch looper. And this is where this machine with air threading is so stinking easy. Um, like ridiculously easy. I'm gonna put purple thread in for this because that's the color of the thread guides for that cover stitch. Uh, looper. So there's three loopers in this combination machine. The looper closest to you is the cover stitch looper. And when we want to thread it, we'll turn the dial, the threading dial to the threading position. And then just rotating the hand wheels will allow the thread or tubes to engage. But the important part here is that we're going to leave a tail of thread through that top portion of the machine following the purple thread guides, and our thread's going to come out of this looper over here. We need to leave about 18 inches of thread. We'll dangle that thread over, over the air threading port. And then we're just going to go toes down on our foot pedal. And that thread starts to suck through. It's going to come out right here. just like that and it's threaded there was no crazy thread guides that you had to remember to hit or miss so nice so easy i'm loving it um but that's all we need to do for threading the bottom portion of the machine so that was pretty easy now we just have three needles to thread so just like that uh all four threads are threaded we can hit the green check mark which will remind us to turn the knob, disengage our looper threading, close our doors, and we're ready to get going on doing some cover stitch. So our first run through, let's do on a little bit of scrap fabric here, so we can see where these threads are in the stitch, how to disengage everything as you go. Unlike serging, you do need fabric underneath your presser foot when you start stitching. So we're going to start just in from the edge a little bit. And we're going to start just with a couple hand wheel turns to make sure this is all moving smoothly and that our thread isn't caught. We want to leave nice long tails at this point. We'll pull them through and tie them off at the back at the end. And this is just using default tension on screen for this stitch. Default settings on everything. Good place to start. Find your knit is rippling a little bit, you might need to um, adjust differently. So how are you gonna get your cover stitch off the machine when you can't surge off the end? That's where the super fancy little uh, locking tool comes in. This is one of the sweetest things I've ever got my hand on. I've had a cover stitch for a little while at home, and this part is always the trickiest. So to finish this stitch, 
We're going to lift the foot, lift the needles. We, If the needles were stopping in the down position, we could use the back kick on the foot pedal to raise them up. And then from here, we're grabbing those needle threads on top of the fabric. And pulling off to the side. And out to the back. So pulling those out. If you pull them far enough, you can cut them on you know, using a pair of snips or on the thread cutter on the side of the machine. And then you can gently pull the fabric out backwards and go in and trim the looper thread as well. And there you have a super lovely cover stitch. Um, so the part of the reason cover stitches are so lovely is because they're stretchy. So when you pull your underwear up over your bum, the stitch has a really good recovery in the way that it's built. So if you did this with a regular straight stitch on a sewing machine, you'd have no recovering and you'd pop all your stitches. And that three, this is a four thread cover stitch, um, is just a really tidy little stitch. So the purple thread's on the back, that's your looper thread. And when we're going to finish this seam off, on the end that we started, or that we ended on, all the threads are to the back. So we're just going to tie a little knot, which will secure all those stitches, because we don't want we don't want our looper thread to to pull to freedom and come undone on us. That would make us all very sad after you built a garment, or even played around with test sewing. It's a little knot with all four threads. And you could weave that back through the stitch if you were so inclined. It's a little knot there at the other end here. If you can't tie them off because your needle threads are on the top of your fabric still, you can use that chain tool or your tweezers to pull those threads into the back. And again, just tie them into a little knot to secure them and finish them off. If you want to trim these really short instead of weaving them through, I throw a little bit of fray check on there. Just like that. Super tidy from the outside, secured from the inside. We're good to go on that. So the other thing you can do is you might need to do something with this, like shorten your pants or put a new cuff on a t-shirt or cut all the leg seams off your kids' pants because they keep wearing holes in the knees and it's summertime and they need shorts. So uh, cover stitch is lovely if you're working in a round because uh, you can just overlap those stitches as you go. So this is a round tube I made earlier. It's going to fit over the free arm cover just fine or over the free arm. And there's all sorts of lovely markings on here. So if you needed this to sit out here and be a one inch hem, easy to line up and keep your markings straight. There's also a seam guide for the right hand side. But I haven't figured out how it goes on yet, so we can't use it today. That'll be my next thing. This is a right hand seam guide. It attaches somehow over here. Project for tomorrow. Figure out how the seam guide attaches. The downside to doing the video the same day that you open the box. You don't know everything right away. I think that one inch mark will be lovely. Or you get the live demo version of Leah getting everything jammed. Oh. That looper tail got caught. It wasn't moving. So if you need to remove a cover stitch seam, undoing the looper thread will release all your needle threads. Unless they're really super jammed. Let's start that again. This time, trim off all the serger tail that probably got caught too. This time we have all those threads up, so we'll just 
manage those as best we can to make sure they're not getting caught on the foot. Already moving smoother. Back to the front, we'll just overlap gently. And we can release the same way. Not my prettiest, prettiest attempt. Definitely much easier than trying to do this with a twin needle. So what happened here, upper looper thread got caught um, as I started stitching and it's tight tension just continued to be a little bit of a problem the whole way through. But this is why we test before we get going. So my second time doing this all the way around will be much smoother than the first. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a fun machine. And, and for my first couple stitches here, totally impressed, totally loving it. Um, the sergers are so much easier than they used to be. So if you had a serger 30 years ago, um, they're, they're not the same beasts that they were before. They're much, much easier to use. Um, even if you don't have something fancy like ear threading, all the threading guides are much easier to use than they used to be. So really pretty slick. Um, that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you had a lovely Monday. Um, I do have these on order. So if you're wanting one, um, give us a call. We'll We'll get you hooked up with one of our first out of the first couple shipments. So I hope you have a great evening. Be safe, be kind, be calm, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.